Why there's poverty in Nigeria? Nigeria, a country renowned for its vibrant Nollywood movies and diverse culture. Unfortunately, the government is plagued by a harsh reality. Poverty grips many citizens like a vice. In this video, we will explore the critical reasons poverty persists in Nigeria, its effects, and the steps the government and its citizens can take to solve this issue. A new report shows that 94 million people live in extreme poverty, with the country ranked as the poverty capital of the world. Poverty in Nigeria is woven with countless threads, but one question still lingers. Where did it all start? Where did the economic crisis begin? Let's look at some history. In 1960, Nigeria declared its independence from British colonial domination. The first few years after independence were characterized by optimism and hope for a better future. The country's economy was predominantly agricultural, with the main export being cocoa. However, the discovery of oil in 1956 changed the country's fortunes. Oil quickly became the mainstay of the economy, accounting for over 90% of export earnings and 80% of government revenue. In the 1970s, Nigeria experienced an economic boom primarily fueled by oil. The country became one of the largest oil producers in the world and a significant player in OPEC. Latest data by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, for crude oil production for the month of May 2023, reveals that Nigeria is again ahead of Angola in its daily crude oil production. This implies that Africa's largest uh, economy is now holds the first position and stands as Africa's largest crude oil producer. The government invested heavily in infrastructure and social development, building roads, schools, hospitals, and other public amenities. However, the boom quickly turned to bust in the 1980s, when a combination of factors, including falling oil prices and corruption, led to economic decline. The Structural Adjustment Programs SAPs, implemented in the 1980s worsened the poverty situation in Nigeria. You see, the programs were designed to stabilize the economy, reduce inflation, and promote growth. However, the agenda had severe implications. They led to removing subsidies on necessities such as food, fuel, and education. Removing subsidies led to the rising cost of living, making life unbearable for ordinary Nigerians. In 1986, the dollar, the naira, in 1980, one dollar was 60 kobo. By 1986, 136 kobo was one dollar. And there was so much noise that the naira was over. Valued. Additionally, the SAPs led to massive unemployment, as many firms collapsed due to high interest rates and inflation. Although Nigeria has made some strides in improving its socio-economic conditions recently, it's still lagging. It's 2023, and the country is racing towards a debt mark of $172 billion. According to the prestigious World Bank's 2020 Human Capital Index, Nigeria's human capital development ranked only 150 of 157 countries globally. To the World Bank's concerns on climate change and the launch this of its Human Capital Index, where Nigeria ranks 152 out of 157 countries. What does this mean? Well, ranking 150 out of 157 in human capital development by the World Bank means that Nigeria's ability to harness the potential of its people and develop their skills and capabilities is relatively low compared to other countries. This means that the country has a lot to do. So, what's causing all this poverty in Nigeria? The subpar governance structure is among the key causes. Nigeria has a history of poor governance, characterized by corruption, nepotism, and a lack of political will. Corruption is pervasive in Nigeria and affects all sectors of the economy. Corruption has led to the mismanagement of public resources, which has stunted the country's economic growth. When corruption thrives in a country, it creates a vicious cycle. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Let me give you an example. If a government official embezzles funds for a public project, that project might never be completed, meaning people who rely on that project will suffer. 
For example, if a road meant to connect two regions is never completed due to corruption, people and goods cannot travel between these regions, which may lead to higher prices of goods and services. This will impact many families who are already living in poverty as they may struggle to afford necessities. Furthermore, there is a gap between the affluent and people experiencing poverty in Nigeria because there isn't enough political will to put policies that are good for everyone. The government was rife with corruption, and public officials siphoned billions of dollars from the national treasury into their private accounts. Well, of course, what the uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is really sourcing is, uh, you know, who owns this money. And they are suspects, including, uh, you know, the managing directors we have seen in local reports of the National Petroleum Corporation. And they're really... In addition, there was rampant mismanagement of public funds with little regard for transparency or accountability. Another cause of poverty in Nigeria is the lack of education. With almost 10 million kids not attending school, among all countries worldwide, Nigeria has one of the highest illiteracy rates. You see, to overcome poverty, people might use education to help them learn new skills and information. The lack of education has perpetuated the poverty cycle in Nigeria as families cannot afford to pay for education, thus creating a generation of uneducated individuals. Thirdly, the escalating rate of unemployment worldwide partly contributes to the high poverty levels in Nigeria. The country has a high level of youth unemployment, which has contributed to the high poverty rates. Africa's largest economy has struggled to create enough jobs for its teeming population of young people, particularly those affected by the lack of opportunities. The government's incapacity to generate employment and promote entrepreneurship has increased Nigeria's poverty rates. Numerous Nigerians have been compelled to leave their country to pursue jobs abroad. Even Nigeria has reached the maximum limit of applying for a diversity green card visa, which has led to a brain drain, causing more suffering to the Nigerian economy. The debt crisis is another major factor that led to Nigeria's economic decline. In the 1970s and 1980s, the government borrowed heavily from international lenders to fund development projects. However, much of the funds were mismanaged or siphoned off, and the country could not repay the loans. By the 1990s, Nigeria was heavily in debt, and the debt burden is still growing. According to Debt Management Office, the country's overall debt reached $103.1 billion in 2022, an increase of 14.46% from 2021 debt. For majority of the past decade, Nigeria has been borrowing aggressively to fund its budget. Africa's biggest economy suffered two recessions in 2016 and 2020 and has been borrowing massively in the process. According to World Bank statistics, when this is divided by an estimated population of 213 million, it produces $470.312 as a depiction of what the debt per head or debt per capita translates into. Nigeria's economic decline has severely impacted the country's population. The decline in social services, such as healthcare and education, has worsened the situation. In addition, the debt burden has meant that the government has limited resources to invest in social and economic development, further exacerbating the poverty problem. How has poverty in Nigeria affected it? Well, poverty in Nigeria has led to inadequate provision of healthcare services. The average Nigerian cannot afford quality healthcare, leading to increased mortality rates. The inability to access healthcare has resulted in more people dying from preventable diseases, devastatingly affecting their families and the economy. The government of Nigeria has fallen short of providing quality healthcare, which has pushed more Nigerians to get healthcare from unqualified medical personnel, jeopardizing their health. The effect of insecurity on the economy of Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. It has driven away foreign investors, disrupted commercial activities, and discouraged tourism. The adverse effects of insecurity on the economy have led to the unemployment of many citizens. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the unemployment rate stood at 33.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020, and that's up from 27.1% in the second quarter of the same year. This makes it difficult for individuals to support themselves and their families, leading to widespread poverty in the nation. Furthermore, 
Insecurity has also stretched the government's budget for security as security agencies need to be equipped with adequate resources to combat insecurity. Funds that could have been directed to other areas such as education, healthcare, and infrastructure. Lastly, poverty in Nigeria has also led to limited access to food. Many Nigerians who live below the poverty line cannot afford nutritious food. Instead, they have to rely on cheaper, less nutritious options. According to the World Food Program, Nigeria has one of the highest malnutrition rates globally. Food insecurity is very high, with over 11 million people needing food assistance. Here at this distribution point in Mongono, Inan Ibrahim collects food aid because of the insecurity caused by the Islamic State group in West Africa, also known as ISWAP. She and her husband have fled their hometown to save the lives of their seven children. Inan convinced her husband to abandon his field overnight. It's essential to note that these challenges are significant, and addressing them will require proactive and collective efforts from the government, private sector, and citizens. Nigeria's poverty situation is alarming and requires practical solutions to alleviate the suffering of millions of Nigerians. So, what can the government and Nigerians do to deal with poverty? Firstly, the government should invest in quality education. My viewers, we all know the importance of quality education in a country. Education is a tool that can transform individuals, their families, and communities. Education is vital to reducing poverty and creating job opportunities. Nigerians should prioritize education and skill development. A good education equips individuals with the knowledge and skills to start and manage businesses. As the internet has grown, online courses have become readily available, and Nigerians can acquire financial skills from the comfort of their homes. If you're ready to build a robust financial building, subscribe to my channel. The government ought to fund high-quality, free education to enable more Nigerians to develop skills and knowledge that will allow them to escape poverty. Additionally, the government should develop a curriculum catering to the market's needs to ensure graduates are employable. Secondly, the government should create job opportunities for its citizens. The government needs to fund infrastructure projects and promote entrepreneurship to generate jobs. Additionally, the government should invest in the agricultural sector. We can all witness that Nigeria is blessed with fertile land and a favorable climate for agriculture. Agriculture is a significant sector in the Nigerian economy, a major contributor to the country's GDP, and it can provide job opportunities for millions of Nigerians. Individuals can start small farms and learn agricultural techniques such as crop rotation, irrigation, and pest control. They can also form cooperatives and work together to create more extensive and profitable farms. The government can support farmers by building roads, storage facilities, and irrigation systems. Entrepreneurship is another way Nigerians can create job opportunities for themselves and those around them. The government may foster a climate encouraging entrepreneurship by offering soft loans, tax incentives, and business development services, but individuals must take the initiative to start businesses. A small business can employ a few people and, with time, grow into a larger enterprise that can use many more people. The government can also provide training and mentorship to aspiring entrepreneurs to help them start and grow their businesses. Thirdly, the Nigerian government should invest in healthcare. Now, the World Health Organization recommends that countries should allocate 15% of their national budgets to health. But Nigeria's yearly budgets over the years have failed to achieve this. Millions of Nigerians do not have access to health care and have no form of health insurance cover. The government should provide free and quality health care to all Nigerians to ensure that more people have access to essential health care services. Investing in health care will lead to improvements in health care infrastructure and support to rural areas that will benefit people living in poverty who may otherwise not be able to afford medical care. The government should also train healthcare personnel to enhance the country's healthcare quality. This will lead to improved health outcomes, which can translate into higher productivity levels in the workforce and, in the end, translate to economic growth. Nigerians will attend work and carry out their activities effectively when they are medically fit and healthy. 
Reduced health risks lead to reduced sick days, increased energy levels, and mental and physical well-being. Another thing is security. The government must take necessary actions to safeguard the citizens and the economy. This includes deploying innovative strategies to combat insecurity, improving intelligence gathering, and strengthening security agencies' capacity. To optimize efforts at addressing these evolving challenges in the country, the federal government has set up this new Office of the National Security Advisor and National Counterterrorism Center. Speaking at the inauguration of the two state-of-the-art facilities, President Mohamedou Buhari says the structures are symbols of his administration's firm commitment towards ensuring national security. Lastly, the government should tackle corruption head-on. Corruption has contributed significantly to the mismanagement of public resources, stunting economic growth in the country. Now, imagine a scenario where a government decides to fight corruption. What happens? First, it means the government is dedicated to creating a level playing field for all citizens. Second, it could signal to international donors and investors that the government is serious about fighting corruption and may lead to more funding and investments trickling into the country, which can boost the economy and reduce poverty. Moreover, the fight against corruption can lead to better services to the people and more accountability for government officials. This will ensure public resources are managed transparently and efficiently, leading to economic growth and development. Nigeria's Vision 2030 aims to make the country among the top 20 economies worldwide and a global player in many areas. This meeting is an extended session of the National Economic Council meeting chaired by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo with state governors in attendance. The focus of today's meeting is based on human capital development. Still, poverty hinders the country's progress toward achieving this vision. It is time for action and the future of Nigeria must be taken into account by Nigerians. Now that you know how economic progress affects citizens, join me for a ride across economic landscapes and prospects. Click on the next video to stay ahead of the curve.